Can somebody tell me what disease is? Violation of God's law. why I keep going over this over and over every time? Repetition, we need to know it. <laughs> Repetition and enlargement. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be dealing with what type of people? Sick people, right? So we need to understand what disease is. Now, what are the four steps when taking care of the disease? Ascertain the problem. Okay, ascertain the cause. Okay. What's the next one? Unhelpful conditions removed. Okay. Remove unhelpful. So what's an example of that? Give me an example of removing an unhelpful condition. What if somebody has um, asthma and they smoke? Yes. Getting rid of the cigarettes, right? Okay. Then wrong habits corrected. You know, I'm always using this one as an example. You're supposed to stand like this. But did you know improper speaking is also a violation of the loss of health? And she says many have gone to an early grave for um, abusing the vocal cords. Do you guys remember the singer of Queen? This was way back in the 70s and 80s. He had serious, uh, he got throat cancer. And they said it had a lot to do with the way he was singing. And other singers as well. We're supposed to sing from our stomachs and not from our, our throats. So in speaking, speaking eloquently, speaking, uh, projecting our voices, and taking a deep breath when, before you, right, when you want to say what you have to say, because some people will talk and talk and they don't inhale and get that the air that they need. So that's another wrong habit, correcting. Okay, and then, then nature is to be assisted. Okay, so. Um, I have a question. So, before you, uh, isn't one, isn't two and three almost the same? No, because a wrong habit is not, okay, what's worse, smoking or um, while well, standing like this? Smoking. Of course. So this is important, like the stuff that's detrimental. Wrong habits. Okay, so maybe number two is the more things severe. that are directly related to Yes, the and more okay. severe. Okay. You, you could say these are similar, mm -hmm. but two is more severe. Okay. Okay, this would be like slouching not sitting straight at your desk, um, the way you use your hands. You know, she says proper body alignment for everything we do is very important. That would be a wrong habit. Okay? And then number four, nature's to be assisted. Now, what if we're dealing with an emergency? Do we do one, two, three, and four? No, we go straight to this. If it's a life-threatening situation, who has time to ascertain the cause? I don't care how they got the heart attack. I want to stop the heart attack right now. Amen. But if it's somebody with heart disease, they're not having a heart attack, then you do step one, two, three, and four. Is that understandable? <coughs> okay, today, we... And all those steps you can be doing simultaneously, correct? Um, yes, yes. But, but... Some of them you step by step because some things will be too overwhelming for people. Mm -hmm. You can't do all four at once. Give them one at a time. Okay. This one is working as well. I need to bring some markers. Please bring them. There, that's better, huh? Mm -hmm. R. 
you allergic. This is our topic today. Is this a problem that affects a lot of people? Yes. Allergies? Do you know anybody who's allergic to anything? Yeah. Serious? But I'm talking about like your average things in life, like milk Myself, or meat ketchup, or peanuts, yeah. chocolate, right? We all know somebody who's allergic to something, right? That's what we're going to be dealing with today. All right. What is an allergy? This is Encyclopedia of Foods and Their Healing Power, Volume 2. And I'm going to page 220. No, I'm sorry. 333 is where I'm going. Page 333. We are told an allergy is the body's rejection of a chemical substance known as an allergen or antigen. This reaction is disproportionately intense related to the minute amount of the allergen or its knockiness. So, it can be something very small, but in some people it can have a major impact on how they react to it. And we're going to be going into details of which things cause the allergies and how you can get tested on how you can test yourself. We're going to be covering all this today. Many cases of eczema, rhinitis, my most constant, asthma, migraine, and colitis are allergic reactions and may be initiated or exacerbated. Exacerbated means to be made worsened by one or more of the foods listed here. Now, we're going to be talking about some of the foods. Does anyone have any idea what is the number one food that people are allergic to? Milk. Milk. Dairy products. Milk. Dairy products. Dairy and all its byproducts. And all its products. Do you have any idea how many percent are allergic to it? Not everyone has a reaction. 60 to 70 percent of Americans, or actually the world population, are allergic to dairy. Where they have, where they have side effects and, you know, all kinds of problems going on, 60 to 70 percent. It is the leading cause of type 1 diabetes in children and the third leading cause of heart disease and a very common cause of upper respiratory disease where you get the mucus, the asthma. It triggers asthma. It's responsible for chronic sinusitis chronic runny nose, chronic rhinitis, which is the runny nose, and things like that. This item is the number one leading cause of allergies. And remember we talked about the antibodies in the cows last week? Yes. Now what species on earth is the only species that drinks milk after it's weaned from the mother's breast? Humans. There's no other, no other species on the planet that continues to drink milk after it's weaned. And we remember we talked about the antibodies in the milk last week and how it attacks because it is the immune system for the baby because babies don't normally have a full, complete immune system. And so if you have cow's milk in a human, the antibodies in the cow's milk is going to be looking around. Now is the human body familiar? Is cow's milk familiar to a human body? So they'll both be attacking. The antibodies in the cow's milk will be attacking the human, and the human's body will be attacking as well. And that's where you get what's called an autoimmune disorder. When its own immune system is fighting against itself because there's a foreign invader. Is that understandable? Now, does anyone know what is the number two 
cause palate of allergies? The second leading cause of allergies, does anyone know what that is? Now before I continue on with the second one is, this is what we're dealing with when we're dealing with allergies. There are frequent offenders, certain things that are frequent offenders. There are certain offenders like milk that trigger allergic reaction from other items that normally does not cause allergies. For example, the doctor will tell you you're allergic to mangoes, or you're allergic to peanuts, or you're allergic to alfalfa sprouts. Let's use that as an example. So you get rid of those three items, but you still have the allergic reaction. It's not because you were allergic to those three items, but those were counteracted off of the, other, the main culprit. So the number one, what did we say was? Yeah. And the number two, anyone have any idea? Nuts. Can you guys read that? What's the number two cause of allergies? Fish. Fish. So if somebody tells you, I have allergies, severe allergies, what's the first thing you're going to ask them? Do you drink milk? Are you on dairy products? Do you eat fish? Those are the first two. In most cases, not in all cases, but in most cases, if you eliminate the dairy, you've eliminated the problem. Allergies are the easiest, easiest things to eliminate. And there's only five steps. In most cases, only step one is required. And that's removing the milk, the fish, and we'll go more into foods that are the next culprit. Now, this, let me continue here. Um, Fish is the leading cause of allergies. Fish not only cause allergies, but it is also one of the leading causes of asthma that triggers asthmatic reactions that can ultimately lead to dermatological issues such as eczema and other dermatological issues. And so is milk. So like my niece, my niece's daughter, she had all this eczema. By the way, did you guys know in baby's formula, they put cow milk? Were you aware of that? There's cow milk, cow proteins, whey, casein, all, that's in the baby's milk. It's very harmful to babies, and a lot of these babies are getting eczema. It's because of the, the cow's milk that's in the baby formula. Babies are not supposed to have any cow's milk until they're at least one years old, but they're putting derivatives of it in the formula. So that's one of the main causes of the allergies. Now, babies are not eating fish, but they're eating dairy in their milk. And people think, because it's formula, it's not cow's milk. There's cow's milk in it. Okay. Um, fish are full of mercury, and they also have, you guys ready for this? They have a 40-foot worm. Fish have worms that hook to your intestines. And I'll show you what it looks like. Page 484. This is the volume two of the Family Medical Guide. There's different types of worm, but this is a particular one that's in the fish. Is it called a hookworm? Okay. No, hookworms on the on the, on the uh, Tex toxoplasmosis. Oh, yeah. It's a hookworm. It's a type of hookworm. Oh, and they're up to 40 feet long. 40 feet. 40 feet. And they are found in the fish. So don't think just by eating pork you get worms. This is a common worm in the fish. What is it called? Spell, please. Toxo, T-O-X-O, plas, P-L-A-S, M-O-S-I-S. And this is page 484 of the Family Medical Guide, Volume 2. So you can be infested with parasites. And do you know what a sign of infestation of worms is? What's the number one sign if somebody's infested with worms? Itchy. Where? No. The no. Anal. The rectum. I remember when my kids were, how old was my daughter? This was 95. So she was, no, this was 94. She was six years old and my son was nine. And they had another sign is pygmy bellies. 